Hi. How are you? Peace be with you. I swear to the creator of the universe that I speak nothing but the truth. Just bear with my voice for a few minutes and I will deliver the message which my master has entrusted me to speak. The message is particularly addressed to the Muslims. As for non-Muslims, I hope you will judge for yourself if there is any logic in the ideology of Islam. O oh Muslims, do not live in delusion. Quran 7 157 contains the sayings of Muhammad, those who follow the messenger, the prophet, who can neither read nor write, whom they will find described in the Torah and the Gospel which are with them. Unquote. This prophecy is false, because Quran 34 verse 44 and 36 6, 32 3 and 62 2, which sum up to say no scripture and no warner was sent to the Arabs and they lived in idolatry in Saudi Arabia. The rationale behind it is simple. Nothing in the Torah and Gospel speak of an Arab coming out from Saudi Arabia, and that is why the scripture was not given to the Arabs before the birth of Muhammad. Can Muslims reconcile your claims for Muhammad's prophethood with Quran 34 verse 44? Quran 32 verse 3 and Quran 36 verse 6, Quran 62 verse 2, which say no scripture nor warner sent to the Arabs, and hence they lived in idolatry with the Kaaba in Mecca? If the Quran is true, then there is no prophecy from Muhammad, since the scripture was not given to Muhammad earlier because nothing in the Torah and Gospel applies to him. This logic must be comprehended beforehand because it cannot make sense for the scripture to be withheld from the Arabs if it speaks about the coming Arab from Saudi Arabia. As far as the Torah is concerned, Quran 544-47 was a self-confession of Muhammad that these laws applied to the people of the book. So, how can Muslims apply it for the non-children of Israel? It does not make sense to me. Yahweh God in his wisdom had entrusted the scriptures to Moses who wrote the law for the children of Israel pointing them to the coming Messiah Yahshua. The scriptures have been entrusted to the Hebrews since 1500 years BC, when Moses first wrote the law and the historical events, which took place in the land of Egypt until they reached the desert near the land of promised land, which Yahweh gave to Abraham and his son Isaac and his descendants. Everything written in the Torah of Moses applies only to the children of Israel. When Yahshua Messiah came forth from the tribe of Judah, he was sent to the children of Israel and fulfilled all the law which Moses wrote about him. Then Yahshua Messiah instituted the new covenant to supersede the covenant of Yahweh established with Moses, as he said in Matthew 11 verse 13 and Luke 16 verse 16 saying the law and the prophets were until John. Since then, the kingdom of God is proclaimed, and everyone presseth it to enter in. Unquote. Prophet John the Baptist was raised up by Yahweh to be born six months earlier to proclaim the coming of the one who existed before him. Quran 34 verse 44 and Quran 36 verse 6 say no warner nor scripture was sent to the forefathers of the Arabs before Muhammad and hence they were heedless and lived in idolatry in Saudi Arabia. The common sense of the Arabs have failed them to believe in an unlettered Arab who neither read nor write the scripture of the Torah and the Gospel but merely heard with his ears from the Jews and Christians, who were not qualified to teach the truth. Just rationalize for a moment as to why the scripture was not entrusted to the Arabs before the birth of Muhammad, if the Torah and the Gospel indeed apply to him. The rightful and legal custodian of the scriptures are the children of Israel. When the Gospels of Yahshua had reached the Gentiles, that is non-Jews, the spirit of truth continues to watch over the scripture and to preserve it, as it is meant to reach the whole world and until the end of the age, as Lord Yahshua Messiah said in Matthew 24 verse 14 and Matthew 28 verse 20. The accusations of the Muslims against the Christians and Jews corrupted their scriptures are not only baseless but very foolish, as if Yahweh could change his mind overnight as who should be the rightful custodian of the Holy Scriptures. Yahweh Elohim of Israel has entrusted the Holy Scriptures to the Hebrews since 1500 years BC for the Torah of Moses, 
and then the Christians inherited the Old Testament books from Yeshua Messiah the King of the Jews. Both Hebrew and Christian copy of the Torah are two lines of preservation of the Holy Scriptures. Until today, the Christians never accuse the Jews of corrupting their Holy Scriptures. But when the verses in the Quran contradict with the Torah of Moses in the hands of the Jews and of the Christians, some Muslim scholars began to make false accusations in order to save the Islamic Empire from collapsing. But the truth will prevail. Quran is a fabricated book, the Quran is a fabricated book, which means it has no divine source. A corrupted book has an original copy to prove it. But a fabricated book is faulty from day one, because no scripture was entrusted to the Arabs as custodians, because nothing in the Torah applies to the Arabs nation. God Almighty will not withheld the scripture from the Arabs as custodians of the book, if the earlier scriptures indeed apply to Muhammad. For instance, Quran 11 verse 71 says of Abraham's wife was sent the glad tidings by angels on the birth of Isaac and after Isaac of Jacob. Common sense implies that Abraham's wife will bear two sons namely Isaac and Jacob, to fulfill the word of Allah of the Quran. But Quran 21 verse 72 says Jacob was a grandson of Abraham. There is no way to harmonize the scriptural error in Quran 11 verse 71, because the authentic Torah proves that the glad tiding to Abraham was about the birth of Isaac only, and it does not involve Jacob, who was a twin brother of Esau. Even if the prophecy was about the birth of grandson Jacob, it is still inaccurate, because Esau was elder than Jacob. The second internal error in the Quran is concerning Esau's son of Mary daughter of Imran Vaid. Quran 66 verse 12. This Mary was a biological sister of Aaron Vide Quran 19 verse 27 to 28, because they were from the same biological father Imran also known as Imran father of Moses. How could Esa be the same person as Yehoshua born around 1 AD, whereas Aaron and Moses lived around 1500 years BC? In the Hebrew culture, when the words sister and daughter are used to apply to a person like Mary, she was definitely the daughter of Imran. The third internal error in the Quran is concerning Esa, son of Mary was not crucified, nor died on the cross Vide Quran 4 verse 157. Strictly speaking Esa was not crucified nor died on the cross. It was Yeshua who was crucified and died on cross in Jerusalem, as he foretold about it. Allah of the Quran is a liar by breaking the word foretold by Yahshua. So either the translation of Yahshua to Esa is wrong, or the record of Jesus was not crucified on the cross is a fabrication, as Muhammad was not a key eyewitness. Allah of the Quran is a liar, because he told Muhammad in Quran 34 verse 44, Quran 32 verse 3 and Quran 36 verse 6, that he sent Muhammad as a warner to the Arabs but then he interfered with the teachings of the Torah and the Gospel in Quran 9 verse 30, by cursing the Jews and the Christians and he hated the Jews and Christians in Quran 5 verse 51. Allah commanded to fight the people of the book in Quran 9 verse 29, and subdued them to the extent of paying humiliation tax. Allah of the Quran is a liar because he said that Esau was sent to confirm the Torah of Moses but Yeshua said he was sent to fulfill the Torah of Moses and the prophets, and then his gospel superseded all prophets by Luke 16 verse 16. Yahweh appointed Hebrew prophets, who know the Torah of Moses but Allah of the Quran, deceived and illiterate Arab Quran is a miracle only, if the things in the Quran have been verified by the people of the book, to be an exact copy of the Quran, as told in Quran 3 verse 3. The Quran in the hands of the Muslims is not an original copy but a revised copy written by Caliph Uthman. Ali Abu Talib, son-in-law of Muhammad should succeed Muhammad but Abu Bakr the father-in-law of Muhammad usurp the position of the rulership or caliphate of the Islamic Empire. Ali Codex never became an official book but the book revised by Caliph Uthman was exalted purely by political power. Allah of the Quran is a liar as he appointed an Arab, who did not know how to read, and write the Torah of Moses in order to deceive him.
A person can easily be deceived if he does not read the Torah and Gospel beforehand as required in Quran 3 verse 81. Allah of the Quran is an enemy of Yahweh. Hence it is concluded that Yahweh's enemy is the devil in disguise, as an angel of light. Yeshua Messiah had eleven apostles except Judas Iscariot who betrayed him, and many disciples who saw Yeshua was crucified and died on the cross. Yeshua Messiah himself proclaimed to the Jews that the sign of Jonah of three days and three nights in the heart of the earth would be fulfilled by him. All eleven apostles of Yeshua Messiah preached about the risen Lord and Savior. Why a non-eyewitness statement is valid, when the custodian of the gospel are the children of Israel and the Christians. This again does not make sense, to accuse that this historical event could be altered overnight by a stroke of a pen from the scribe of Muhammad. I hereby solemnly declare that the Quran is a fabrication by Muhammad and his scribes and I hold them accountable on the Day of Judgment. Whoever wishes to defend for the internal errors, which I have stated earlier on, may respond by comment or video response. Failing to refute my three internal errors in the Quran is a sufficient proof that Allah of the Quran is a false god and Muhammad was a misguided Arab man who listened to the false advice of Waraka ibn Nafal cousin of the wife of Muhammad called Khadijah. Before Khadijah died in 619 AD, Muhammad had only one wife but when his wife died, he turned into a sex addict engaged to child bride Shah, who was then about six years old, and consummated the marriage at her age of nine years old. Shah did not produce any child from Muhammad but she helped to fabricate the Quran. Muhammad deviated from monogamous marriage, and broke the new covenant's law of Yeshua, which the Christians follow it till today. Yahweh sent Yahashua to restore the law concerning the one flesh marriage, which the previous prophets had deviated from it. But Muhammad was a gospel lawbreaker, and hence he was not appointed by Yahweh Elohim of Israel. 1. When Muslims boast of the good transmission of the Quran, can it make a book divine, when the inspiration was in fact a fabrication? 2. When Muslims boast of the fastest growing religion is Islam, is the truth of the book determined by the fastest growing religion? In fact all disbelievers and idolaters were drowned in the great flood, and only eight persons of the Noah's family were safe in the ark. 3. Where is the proof from the Quran that Abraham and Ishmael traveled to Mecca in Saudi Arabia, when Quran does not mention Abraham was in Mecca at all? Quran 34 verse 44 and Quran 62 verse 2 are ample proof that Abraham did not travel to Mecca to build the Kaaba. If the Arabs were given the scripture by Abraham before Muhammad, will there be a book like the Bible in the Saudi Arabia before the Quran? In Quran 3 verses 3 to 4 say, He has revealed unto thee Muhammad the scripture with truth, confirming that which was revealed before it, even as he revealed the Torah and the Gospel aforetime, for a guidance to mankind, and has revealed the criterion. Unquote, from Pikthel translation. As the Quran was revised by Caliph Uthman, and what we find today it does not confirm the Gospel, then the Gospel remains the book of authority. By logic, the earlier book remains authentic and not the later book. Caliph Uthman was assassinated maybe, due to the curse for burning or altering the Quran. By virtue of Quran 3 verse 3, the Torah and the Gospel are given earlier from mankind, not the fabricated Quran. The accusation against Torah and the Gospel of Yahushua must stop immediately, because the custodians of the Holy Scriptures are not the Arabs in the first place. Muhammad himself acknowledged in Quran 34 verse 44, Quran 32 verse 3 and Quran 36 verse 6, that the Arabs were not given the Scripture, before him and his forefathers were heedless. Muhammad further acknowledged in Quran 5 verses 44 to 47, that the people of the book should be judged by their given books. Does it make any sense for the all-knowing God, to command the people of the book, to follow their corrupted books? Again this is logical in Islam to exempt the Muslims from the Torah and the Gospel and follow the new fabricated laws. Nothing in the Torah and the Gospel apply to Muhammad. Quran 7 verse 157 is a fabrication due to the false prophecy of Waraka ibn Nawfal who told Muhammad to be a warner to the Arabs, 
not to mankind. Where does the Hadith mention Waraka said Muhammad is a warner to the mankind? Is this not a fabrication in the Quran? Waraka ibn Nafal declared Muhammad was a warner to the Arabs only, and when Muhammad ibn Abdullah interfered with the Jews and Christians in Quran 9 verse 29 to verse 31, it becomes apparent that Waraka's prophecy was false. So Muslims who quoted Waraka's prophecy to support the prophethood of Muhammad must acknowledge that Waraka had uttered a false prophecy. A prophecy is false when it does not materialize as predicted word by word. Can the Quran fabricated by an accursed man, Muhammad and Caliph Uthman become a holy book for mankind? Quran can never supersede the gospel since Allah said in Quran 3 verse 3 that the gospel is a guide for mankind. As the Quran does not prove itself to be authentic from a divine source, it must be rejected as an authentic and not the one which has been authenticated by a thousand of years in use since 50 AD when the gospel spread to Iraq and other nations. Aramaic-speaking Christians and Aramaic Bible are still found in Iraq today. This message will be used to judge those Muslims who have read it and yet deny my warning. Quran is a curse to the world today because many million and million of lives are destroyed by wars and terrorism since 622 AD due to following the man-made teachings in the fabricated book. Yeshua Messiah led no war and no rebellion in Israel and the gospel was spread by preaching with love and not by wars. The wars mentioned in the Old Testament books were confined only to Israel and it never spread beyond Israel's neighborhood. On the other hand, Muhammad started the war with the Arab Jews in Medina around 627 AD and it spilled to all over the world. Islam has an evil beginning, as Fatima daughter of Muhammad died because of the power struggle in Islam, when Muhammad died in 632 AD. May Yahweh open the eyes of the Muslims, and lead them to repent of their sins, before it is too late. Once Lord Yeshua Messiah returns to fetch his bride, there is no chance left for the Muslims, who live in idolatry till today. Whoever is stubborn to the gospel of Yeshua Messiah is equivalent to idolatry. 1 Samuel 15 verse 23 says, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Unquote. Iraq and Turkey which were dominated by Christians, before the advent of Islam, were either killed or expelled from the land or forced to convert to Islam. When Muhammad died by the curse of his own sins in 632 AD, below the appointed time of death of 70 years old, the lands of Iraq and Israel were still free from Islamic occupation. So who was the prophet receiving the revelation to fight and occupy the foreign lands outside Saudi Arabia? Israel fell into the hands of Muslims in the year 638 AD, when Caliph Omar occupied Jerusalem and hence the Dome of the Rock was built in 688 AD and completed in 691 AD, as an abomination in Jerusalem till today. In term of biblical prophecy, 688 plus 1260 years will bring us to year 1948 AD Israel regained control over Jerusalem city in 1948 AD, when the glory of Yahweh once again returned to Israel. But the Dome of the Rock is a reminder to the Jews, who rejected Messiah Yeshua until the fullness of time. Just look at the Golden Dome in the picture behind me. How the Jews wished to rebuild the Jerusalem Temple destroyed since 70 AD, as prophesied by Yeshua Messiah. This Golden Dome is a stumbling block to the Jews. Yahweh will make a new Jerusalem city, to descend from heaven, as the eternal home for all believers in the new covenant of Yeshua. Christians do not fight over this Dome of the Rack. This picture reminds the Jews to humble themselves and relook at the prophecies of Yeshua, which were fulfilled as the promised Messiah, and to remind the Muslims that Islam is not a religion of peace, but of domination over Jewish land and Christian nations such as Iraq, Iran, Egypt and Turkey. Yeshua Messiah will return to Jerusalem city as a true liberator for the Jews and for the whole world to liberate them from Islamic oppression by rapture of the true body of Christ. All Muslims will perish in the lake of hellfire as the scripture says, whoever does not serve the Lamb of Yahweh that is Yeshua Messiah, and whose name does not appear in the Lamb's book of life, will be cast into hellfire, which is the second death. Amen.
Shalom.